Welcome to Spiritual Transformation with Mary Beth, where I interview top thought leaders in the spiritual community. This includes intuitive healers, psychics, people who can channel, people who've had near-death experiences and spiritually transformative experiences. This podcast is something I created because really I'm making the supernatural natural. We all have psychic and intuitive abilities. And my special guest today is someone who I have known for 15 years. She is amazing. Her name is Kathy Barr. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and read her bio to you and um, introduce you to Kathy, who's gonna tell her fantastic story and teach us a little bit how we can become more intuitive ourselves. So Kathy is your heart's journey, heart's journey's healing guide and has been practicing alternative healing since the 1990s. Initially focusing on Reiki energy medicine, Kathy then expanded her services to include massage therapy, reflexology, intuitive and spiritual counseling. In addition to being a Reiki master and teacher and a licensed massage therapist, Kathy holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from Indiana University and certifications and or specialized training credentials in numerous areas of alternative healing. These are fantastic. I'm going to list them for you here. So spiritual healing, therapeutic touch, shiatsu, yoga, acupressure, iridology, which is the study of the eyes, raindrop therapy, energy balancing and body talk access technician. So she has a lot of experience. So um, Kathy, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so honored that you decided to be here on this podcast to help others expand their consciousness and learn more about intuitive healing, which is, is that the title that you would give yourself mainly? Are you an intuitive healer? An intuitive healer, spiritual counselor, yes. Love it. So um, let's start at the beginning of your journey. Like, give me a little bit of your background. I, I actually, I know a lot about you, but the audience doesn't. So tell us a little bit of how you got started on this, on the, in this industry of intuitive healing. Well, thank you for having me. Um, this is a real honor and I'm happy to be here. And um, I'll have to go way back on this journey because I am an intuitive healer on, on becoming. And in that on becoming, I started, um, I stepped onto this path of intuitive healing and counseling um, in the late 90s. And in the beginning, as a child, I was one of those children who always wanted to help people. And I felt like I just always knew things about him, but I thought everybody knew this. And, um, and then, you know, fast forwarding to college, high school, um, a young adult, I had the privilege to be exposed to a tea leaf reader. And she was my grandmother's best friend from Canada. And she would come down and I was able to watch her do readings. And I remember sitting there just going, oh my gosh, this woman is transforming people's lives before my eyes. And I'm like, I want to do that. And I remember just declaring to the universe, I would love to help people by being able to do readings. And at the time, I, I did not know what that looked like. And um, I'm sorry, my phone is ringing. Oh, I don't hear it at all. We're good. We're good over here. Okay. So I, so you wanted to do it. Uh, by the way, can you tell us what was the word that you called her? A tea leaf reader? She I don't think I even, know, I don't think I even know what that, that term is. Ray was a tea leaf reader from Canada. She was French Canadian mm -hmm. and she actually was able to take a cup of tea leaves and she uh, would twist oh, tea them leaf. in her hands. Yes. And, um, and she would give readings by that, um, you know, by looking in this cup and, um, and she always was positive and gave wonderful things to people. And I could just see people transforming. So that stuck with me. And I remember declaring that that's what I wanted to do. And, and I feel like that was the first opening. So fast forward, um, finished college, um, started a career, got married, had a family, and all through the 80s, I, it was, I still I, I still knew things. And, mm -hmm. but I never discussed it because I live in a conservative community. And um, at, in, so during the late 80s, I came across the path of a 
uh, numerologist. And he came to our local library and I was so excited. I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I want to try it out. So I went and the whole time he was lecturing, I was on fire. I was like, I've got to, I've got to see this man. So anyway, fast forward, I have an appointment with him and I was blown away by what this man could tell me about numbers. And I'm like, I want to do this. You know, I was fascinated by it. And then at the end of the session, I was getting ready to leave and he called me back and he said, Kathy, he said, may I have your hands? And I gave him my hands. And um, for, I don't know, uh, half a minute to a minute, he looked up at me and he said, I want to validate to you that you know what you know, because he said, you're very business minded. And he said, I want you to know that you've always known what you knew. And he said, but there's one thing you don't know. He said, you're a healer. And your destiny here is to be a healer. And I said, well, what does that mean? And he said, well, um, the day will come when you will step on a path and lay your hands on people. And he said, and by your words and, you ha and your hands, you will help people. And, I, and all I could think about was, is I made another declaration and I'm, I'm seeing something unfolding here. So all through, so that was the late eighties, all through the nineties, I'm still in retail management, loving my job. I absolutely loved what I did. And, but those 10 years in the nineties, I actually quit twice and went back. And what I didn't realize then was God was trying to get me onto a different path back then. And I, I just wasn't awakening, even though I dove deep into studies and I had a spiritual mentor and I, I did all kinds of everything to validate what this numerologist had said to me, you know, healing herbs, everything I, I explored. So um, at the end of the 90s, I actually was led to the Reiki attunements. And after I had those attunements, my life turned upside down. And I actually quit my job for the third time, a job I love with a passion. I quit it. Because the one thing I want to share with your viewers, when God shows you discontent, it's time for change and it's time to listen. Yes. And I wasn't, list I wasn't listening. And so I, you know, I was delayed a little bit because I wasn't listening. So I jumped on to um, the path that I'm on now, and I thought, oh, how am I going to make myself credible as a as a healer and an intuit? Um, I wanted to do energy work on people. I wanted to lay hands on them. And I'm known as a business person around here. So um, I trusted. I absolutely just had to trust. But I also, my mind says, well, let's get some more credentials. So that's when I went into massage therapy and all of that to be able to disguise what I was doing under that uh, precipice. So anyway, um, my practice, the minute I stepped onto it, totally blossomed. I, I just totally, God took care of me. I will say to you, this is a calling. Um, even though I was told, you know, way back when that this was a destiny for me, it truly for me is a calling that I was brave enough and courageous enough to in a small community, conservative community to step out and do this. And I will say that um, when you show up with integrity and authenticity and you do the, you know, you do the work, you know, you're supposed to be doing, it unfolds beautifully, you know, and I've been successful ever since I work out of my home. Uh, I did have a healing center years back. But now I work out of my home. I have a studio and I have a treatment room and um, I do phone readings. I uh, see people in person and um, I agree with the man, um, the numerologist. He said, you will love this path more than you love the one you're already in. And I do. I love it with a passion. So I'm just here to, to help people. And that was my whole premise from, you know, as a child, I just wanted to help people, but I was being shown how I could do that. And as a manager, I helped people. I counseled people. I would know things about them and tell them, but never thinking this was any different than anybody else could do. But then I realized, oh, I was getting hits. I was getting information, you know, it, and, and it just all came together. I love that so much. And it is so that you brought up so many great points, especially being in retail management like high level retail management, a businesswoman. And that is something else I wanted to point out. Like 
you know, even when I first met you, I met you as already an intuitive healer at the Victory of Light Expo 15 years mm -hmm. ago. And you, you look very businessy. You know, a lot of people have these stereotypes in their mind about what a psychic will look like, a psychic medium. And, and you know, they think woo-woo. And, and that's part of what I'd like to do is, you know, demystify all of that and show people like, hey, this is natural. Everybody has psychic abilities. We've almost been kind of taught to ignore them. Would you agree? Well, we're, um, I would say we get shut down because nobody wants to believe it or they think it's voodoo or they think it's, you know, other evil. bad things, <laughs> yeah. evil. And it's not. And how can helping people be evil? That always blows my mind how people think that way, you know, that it's not from God when it actually, I believe, is directly from God. Like in, in like you yes. called it a, call, a calling. It's a calling on your life. And when you said earlier too, I love that you told the audience about, yeah, when you're discontent, when you feel like that little nudge, that is your, that is a calling that is like, you got to stop doing this. So you can have more time for that. And there's a lot of people who think, oh, well, shouldn't get paid to help people. You shouldn't get paid for spiritual stuff, which I strongly disagree with. Like when we are, if you're if retail management is a lot of hours, by the way. And when you're stuck mm -hmm. doing all of those hours, you have less time to help people. So mm -hmm. it's, if it is okay to get paid. It's a beautiful energy exchange. And I think everyone needs to understand that. And if you don't understand it, you simply have an abundance block that, mm -hmm. that I help people with and my, what I do, but um, yes. So it's, if you were doing all those hours of retail, and then trying to do help people in the little hours you had afterwards before you go to sleep, you don't have enough time to help anybody. So I love that you made that leap and are living your passion and are, I agree. So even though you loved retail management, you're so much happier now because, because you yes. followed your path, what you were supposed to be doing all along. This it was definitely what I call divine intervention. It was divine appointments all along the way that I just kept ignoring Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, helping people comes in many forms and ways, and I'm happy that I can do it this way. Um, I love that I can guide them with information that's not mine. Um, you know, it, it comes through and, and people leave transformed. You know, I've seen so many people awaken on my table or, you know, I see, um, I do want to tell the audience um, all those 10 years, I was a closet studier. And so don't be afraid, just get out there. There's so much now in this, in this time period that you can take anything and there's thousands of things offered out there, but way back when that wasn't as open, you know, they're just, right. you just, you know, weird people did those things. And, and then if you don't want to consider me a weird person, but being a Claudia, uh, excuse me, a closet um, studier served me. Um, I could have that quiet time and I, you know, and I felt like I absorbed more than just being out there and trying to get it, you know, and learn. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the little tidbits along the way of just listening and trusting and, and I learned the hard way and we do learn the hard way. You know, sometimes we get that spiritual two by four until we actually wake up and do what we're supposed to be doing. So it's been, right. it it's could been even come in the, like getting fired. That could be a spiritual two by four. Like you're saying, like Absolutely. sometimes, sometimes if you don't listen to the nudges, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then boom, then there's no choice. <laughs> That's right. And, and I can say, I've had a lot of, of two by fours along the way. And the one of them is what you just talked about is what was I going to charge people? Because I have a gift. I want to share it. I want to help people. It was very hard to charge people in the beginning. But if you don't, you're out of balance. And um, am I not worth, you know, my services? And so it became a, a worth issue. And believe me, a lot of the people that have come on to this journey as healers, we all have had it. We've all just, you know, oh, I don't me want to. Too. Me too. Yes. Me too. Me too. And I, you know, it's, I guess there's a good, there's good in that because we don't want to feel greedy or whatever, but um, we do have to have the balance. There's no question. Absolutely. And, and that's a big issue in the spiritual community as uh, there's still that debate about that where some people will only take donations. And it's like, you know, honestly, I had to make that decision uh, myself with, okay, this is what I want to do for a living. I got to pay my bills. If they want me available for them, it's a, it's an exchange. I don't ask people to do things for me for free. I don't ask for their time and, ex you know, 
So it, it just, it doesn't even make sense to me anymore, but I had that block for quite a while. I definitely did, so I totally get it. And um, part of what I do with some clients is helping them get over that same abundance block. So I have like coaches and healers who are stuck and, and I'm so over it now. <laughs> Because I, I do a lot of free stuff. I do a lot of free content. You know, what I mean? we, that's how we can kind of balance it out there, too. You know, I do a lot well, of free stuff. But don't you um, feel that with what we now are doing for a living, that it just comes naturally wherever we are. So we're not always going to charge. You know, I can be standing in the grocery line and the person in front of me, I know something's wrong. I want so much to help them. But I know I have to ask permission or I have to find a way to lead into because I always ask permission if it's not a session, right. you know, it's like, may I offer something to you? And it's either a yes or a no. And, but we never know when, when we're going to be called to do the work we do. And that's what I love about it. I, I mean, all that every day, it doesn't matter if it's friends or family or clients, we're doing our work and divine information's coming in. And um, it's, it's very, it's very rewarding. It's just, you know. It almost makes me chuckle a little bit only because I know you and I know you're a Virgo and I'm a Virgo. I'm like a quadruple Virgo. So I had to go over, get over something before I could actually even be a coach with my unsolicited advice issue. You know, I had to learn and also with giving a better delivery because I'm extremely direct. I'm extremely logical and practical. And I think it's not that I'm not emotional. I'm definitely emotional, but I'm not as sensitive as most people would be. Like, I actually like constructive criticism. Um, and I had to learn, okay, not everybody's okay with that. So that's something you actually helped me with, you know, with, at the Victory of Light when I would see you is, um, Number one, I was still drinking and you were talking to me about integrity. It's like, you're going to be addiction recovery coach in, in you know, you have to quit drinking. And um, I knew that, uh, but it's like I, that you helped me with that little push of, yeah, you know, I shouldn't still be drinking and giving advice about something that I, you know, have a, an addiction to. <laughs> <laughs> so that shifted everything. I think that's when the clients started coming in. Like you said, you start living your authentic life. You start living in integrity. Um, even if nobody knew, like, let's say I just pretended to quit drinking. I wouldn't have had that. I wouldn't have had them come in to, you know, because I'm not being real and they feel Absolutely. it as an energy. Exactly. And I knew early on that that's one thing that, um, not that it makes you stand out, but it, it, it is a path of integrity and being, you know, being truly authentic. When you show up, I will be honest. I, every time I did that, it was like more comes through. It's like, I'm doing the work. I'm not trying to let my ego. Cause I always check my ego, um, in a session because we know how that can take control. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew there was just this, you know, these words that, um, when I knew I was maybe straying off the path, you know, brought me back. It's like, the, you're not showing up authentically, Kathy, you know, it's time to, you know, watch what your, you know, ego is trying to get you to say or whatever. So the one thing I, as you were talking, I wanted to bring up um, what, I, with what I just said, it's about discernment, you know, it's discerning yes. the, it's about discerning the information that's coming in. And I had to learn early on what was me and what was the ego. And, um, and, and that's, that's what also, excuse me, what, what is also what makes you authentic and is when you can check that ego and just be the pure vessel. And, you know, I've always, um, I start a session with prayer, I line with God and I make sure that, you know, okay, this is, you know, how we begin. And I never miss that. I always start, you know, every session with that. Because that's what I was told to do. You know, it was like that was given to me. If you're going to show up authentically and, and walk in integrity and really want people to know what you're about, this is what you do. You show them, you know, that this this is okay. This is the path that, you know, you do align with God. You're not just, you know, trying to make money by telling you things. And, um, and cause I know, you know, I mean, we know people out there, um, intentions are different and, um, you know, I, um, early on, on this journey, I was, um, 
told to pray that whoever I can help with my hands or my words, show them my path or have them cross my path. And that became a mantra every day. And there was, there was a moment in time when I just totally surrendered, checked the ego, showed up and let, you know, all this divine flow through me that I had a two month waiting list. And I'm like, what, you know, that just doesn't happen. And that, that wore me out. And I finally got that back into balance because at that time in the early years, um, that was about balance, learning balance. And, you know, I'd already learned about what to charge. And then the next thing was about balance. And, um, and then it was always about how are you showing up today? You know, what, what was happening to you last night or today before you laid your hands on that person? So I'm about clearing everything out and not letting that come into a session. So there's many tricks to the trade here, so to speak. Um, but I listen and if, and I'm talking about if, if, if you don't want the two by four, we call it, <laughs> listen, just listen, because I had to master listening because that Virgo and that ego mind can just take over in a split second. I know. So as you know, it is a learning, it's an unfolding process. And sometimes it's not easy. Discernment. The ego's so strong. That's yes. the perfect word, discernment. And so let's let's let the audience know like what are you listening to what do what do you call the source is like i know you've said spirit so like what are you describe that for us okay so for me i feel like i'm um clairsentient and claircognizant and um and i may fade in and out on the other two um but this is how i feel like i was as a child and coming up you know on the journey uh, Claire cognizant and we should um, probably we should probably define those because I don't think most of my audience will know what mm -hmm. the Claire's are um you guys the four Claire's uh you got Claire cognizant which is clear knowing that means you just know things and you don't know how you know you got Claire sentience which is clear feeling you just feel mm -hmm. things like you walk into a room and you feel the energy that might be some people's strongest you have Claire audience which is where Kathy do, do, do people actually hear they actually hear sounds and words how does that it describe clear audience i don't have that one i've got clear um, sentience and clear cog cognizance i okay <clears throat> so clear audience is hearing yes it's 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 communicating literally like, hear yeah hearing and <clears throat> and the thing about that is you know there are times i don't hear um voices i mean okay i just have knowing that's i have the downloads practice. that's what i have it's almost like you just know that you get things get downloaded and you're like i know this isn't me you could tell the difference and that's discernment between it being from your head from your mind and from it being like put in your head almost like blocks of thought is what i call it and then the last one is clairvoyance which is clear seeing so some people who like can see spirits see orbs like i've seen orbs and angels very rarely so i call that my last my weakest claire so those are the four claires and now go ahead kathy i just know that like, my audience doesn't mm -hmm. like i just came out of the spiritual closet recently honestly because i haven't been talking about the esoteric stuff and so that's what this podcast is about so we got to catch them up to speed because i don't know how many of them actually would even know what those are so now go ahead with your claires Okay, so I'm glad to know that. And for me, um, Claire Sentient um, is, is a feeling I get when I'm around people. Like being an energy worker, I pick up on people's energies. And just this morning in a conversation with, with a family member, it's like immediately, the minute they answered, I knew. It's like, I know, you know, I'm feeling there, you know, and, I, and you, you know, and then you get to the bottom of it and you're like, okay, yeah, I, I had that right. Um, Claire cognizant is even as a child all the way up to now it's a knowing that drops in i'm not communicating with somebody in my head you know having a conversation it is a it's a download that comes in and i know it and sometimes it's really fast and sometimes we put the pieces to the puzzle together and i i sincerely don't know how any two sessions will go you know i may do this one and this one and then the next person it's different so I just leave it open and I trust. And um, like you, you know, you see things, um, you know, uh, you can work with the spirit world, you know, um, in different ways. But for me, this is this is where 
this is my path, this is my journey, are basically those two clears. And um, not that I don't do the others. Again, it's just I never know when that's going to be shown to me or delivered to me or when it's going to show up in my work. So where is it coming from? Spirit, like angels? Is it God, you know, or some people call source energy or just spirit? Like what what, what do you say yours well, comes from? Um, I align with God. I align with source. And it's whatever that means to everybody. But early on, that's what I was led to, you know, was, is, um, uh, is just come straight up Kathy and, and talk to me, you know, and, and I will talk to you, so to speak, but it's a knowing it's this, uh, you know, everybody has prayer and meditation time different. And for me, that's when I get totally aligned mm -hmm. and, um, I want to share with your audience, if I may, that also on this journey, um, I was uh, um, opened up into uh, Matthew 7, 7, the scripture in the Bible. And it is the one about ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be opened. And once I had that in my Virgo mind, um, it I realized all the things that I could take from that, not just personally, but what I could offer my clients. And I want to tell you, it has been the most um, exciting uh, journey working with that, asking, knocking, and seeking, because it shows up. I mean, it works. You know, when we ask, it, we get an answer. And so that has that has also been the premise of my work, is working with that with people um, and helping them to connect. Um, and we all connect in a million different ways. And I feel like you just have to trust your heart, you know, and your gut mm -hmm. on that. And, but I will say that I go straight to source, straight to God. So, and I'll tell you what, be, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it can encompass though, all of that, because, you know, it can be spirit. It can be consciousness. It can, it can, it can be all that. Um, but for me, it just works. God. So I was just going to say, like, I'm so glad you brought that up in the Bible verse, because and I had full body goosebumps when you said it, because I think this is such an important point, because I get a lot of people who question law of attraction even. And for me, asking it is given, asking you shall receive, all that stuff is law of attraction. Like, I think there's so much misunderstanding, like it's a universal law. And from what I read, like if, if you even Google law of attraction in the Bible, no, it wasn't called law of attraction. Jesus was teaching these concepts because it's a universal law. Who made these laws? God. This is of God. Now, can people abuse these tools? Can people abuse the laws? Absolutely. Just like you can abuse money. You know, we can we can use money for good or we can use it for really bad things too. So um, it's a tool that's given to us. It's a law. We can't get like the law of gravity, no different. But it is it is from God. And, and if somebody abuses it, that doesn't mean the law of attraction is evil. It means that person chose to do something evil with a law that already existed. So I'm so glad you brought that up because and I would encourage people to like look up if you have that concern, if you're a little bit worried about what is the source of law of attraction? Is it evil? Because I have people DM me telling me crazy stuff. I'm, you know, I'm going to hell and all this stuff. Um, I encourage you if you have a fear about it, that's okay because people just have programming from childhood. You know, they just believe what they were taught. They haven't questioned anything. They're not thinking outside of what they were programmed. You know, look it up and see, oh my gosh, all of these concepts, they're in the Bible. <laughs> And some of them were removed from the Bible, actually, like the lost gospel of Thomas. And mm -hmm. there was a council of Nicaea where they, they actually decided what to keep in the Bible and what to take out of the Bible. This is history guys. Like there were Absolutely. things removed that actually empowered us. They, there were things removed and it was decided upon in the council of Nicaea, let's remove this stuff. And by um, Emperor Constantine, like this is real. So, mm -hmm. um, this is history yeah. and a lot of people, a lot of people just take for granted that, oh, well, it's, it's, it's all in there. No, it's not translated differently. Things were moved. It mm -hmm. got all oh, twisted. Absolutely. Absolutely. Doesn't mean the, it doesn't mean the Bible's not a powerful, um, book, mm -hmm. but just understand it's been manipulated. Mm-hmm.
And, and there are still fabulous teachings that you can draw from that, even though it has been you know, Absolutely. rewritten so many, so mm -hmm. many times. There is something I would love to share with your audience about when I was teaching, I, I work with animals too. And when I was doing an animal class um, and all these people were just, I mean, normal people wanting to know how to help their animals. And so the one thing that I shared with them, because it's so basic and God made it so simple and it's about showing up with a positive intention opening up your heart and connecting with whoever or what, you know, just going, you know, connecting and, and then allowing. And when I made it that simple for all these people, and I remember there was even a doctor in on one of these classes and I could, she, she, the light went on and she said, I'm going to use that with my cancer patients. You know, and and what and basically that's what this is. Yes, I've had Reiki attunements, but you know what? If you're just wanting to help your animal, try it. See what happens for you. You know, because it is simple, but it is again. You know, you, you have positive intent, open the heart, and align. You know, with divinity, and see what flows through. Because we're and all connected to God. Some exactly. of us just block, some of us block it. You know, and there are tools like Reiki and things that we could. Um, strengthen that connection, but we are all connected. And a lot of the times, and there's been times I've disconnected myself. God doesn't disconnect from us. We mm -hmm. dis we disconnect from being able to, God's always yeah. there. Just sometimes well, we're, not, we're in a lower frequency yeah. and we can't hear him. Mm -hmm. Or well, we're not listening or, or we're not choosing to listen or, you know, it can be any number of reasons for the disconnect. But again, it's it's the awareness of going, oh, I am disconnected. I, I need to pull my spiritual tools out and get realigned, you know, and get connected. And, um, you know, one of the things that um, was so helpful for me was, um, and you're a part of that, to be honest, was knowing that was confidence, you know, was knowing that we can do this and still be confident. And I remember when I first met you, um, early on in VOL and you were one of my very first clients there. Really? And, yeah. You were one of my very first clients. And I remember showing up because, um, I don't have tools. I don't, I don't do tarot. I don't do numerology. I don't do astrology. God told me early on, Kathy, you have all the tools you need. Just show up and I will work through you. And I'm like, that's what I've done. And, and it's, you know, I've been successful with it. The thing that I want to share though, is in those days, all these people around us in those booths had their tools and, and I was not feeling good enough. Like I don't have a tool. Who's going to want to see me. And you were one of those first people that came to see me. And I walked around um, for hours before I walked around. I used my intuition to pick you. I mean, you don't know how long, cause you were my first, you were my first psychic that I saw. And uh, you know, I actually, well, when you're finished, I'm going to tell that story of, and I know why you have confidence after that, because it was an amazing session. So go ahead. Well, let's just say that you entered my life at a time for validation, because, you know, you look around, there's hundreds of people here with their tools and I'm here and anyone who chose me, I knew God sent them to me. But at the same time, you know, I was so happy to know that what I gave you, the information I gave you, you validated it. And somebody like somebody like me starting out, that's what you seek is validation. And you were able to give that to me. And guess what? You came back year after year after year. Every, every time um, I was there. every every six months. Yes, every six months. Yeah. And it was because... and it was just and it was a delight. And the beauty of working with somebody that, you know, like that that often is there's so much going on that it's always something new and fresh to help you with It's There's always something new, you know, to help you with and to describe a session with me, it was intuition. It was counseling. It was coaching and it was healing. Mm -hmm. So it was a combination of things. I would cry a lot. <laughs> yes. And, and, and that's the thing people showed up at my booth and I was making a lot of people cry, Yeah. but yet I realized very early on Crying is good because it means it resonates. Release. It's it, it, mm -hmm. it's a release and an aha. And that's what I learned from the tea leaf reader. You know, she made people cry, but yet their lives were transformed through those tears. They awakened into new truths, new guidance, 
you know, they didn't have to look at their life through, you know, that horrible negative perspective. They were given something new and fresh and it was the truth for them. And, you know, if I may offer another, um, how, how I work, um, it was given to me that, um, our bodies, our biggest gauge for truth and what feels lighter is truth. And what feels heavy is non-truth. So I have used that practice for many, many years on making decisions in my life in everything. And to it go works. with the lighter decision, what feels lighter. Yeah. What you feels me that. light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I use that for sure. It, you know, and so there's so many tools that are out there that can be, you know, can be claimed by your audience and, and they're simple. We don't have to make it hard. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, spiritual. I mean, it doesn't have to be, I forget the word I'm uh, searching for, but it, it does. Well, let me just say it's magical. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. we, humans make things complicated, like mm -hmm. spirituality. It's because it's our head gets involved in like everything's an ego trap. Like you said earlier, there's so many ego traps. And then, um, yeah, once we, you know, a lot of us, like you said earlier, like connecting with the heart, getting the heart involved. So many of us are up in our head so much mm -hmm. and with the connections more with our heart. And then we have that heart and mind coherence. Like Dr. Joe Dispenza always talks about, once we get the, that in alignment, that's when we really are creating our reality. Like it's just magical, like you just mm -hmm. said. So mm -hmm. can I tell the story about um, our session, my our first session at the Victory of Light? Go oh, by it. the way, I guys, at Victory of Light, they might, I'm just we're talking about like everybody knows, is, uh, international people will be seeing this. Victory of Light is an expo and it's no longer called that. Now it's called Body, Mind, Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, but Victor Peruta had started the Victory of Light many years ago. I'm not sure when, but my first time I went was 15 years ago. And there's so many, it's, it's all about spiritual stuff. It's body, mind, spirit, like a holistic expo. Mm -hmm. So you have vendors who are psychics, you have vendors who, and you have seminars too, all kinds of things mm -hmm. going on there, but it's all Classes. spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so of course I'm drawn to that because I've been this way since forever. I was like born spiritual. I've always had spiritual paranormal life even. So I go up there and I'm, I'm trying to decide. And it was like the big, I don't know why I was like, I didn't have a lot of money though either. So I'm like, I want to be careful how I spend this money today. So I just was, I wanted, I knew about intuition and I was like, make sure that I just went with what felt best. And I picked you and part of it is because you called yourself intuitive healer. And I, my mom had always told me intuition is a higher level than psychic because psychic, you're kind of reading, you're reading the current energy and intuition is um, more of a knowing. And so it's not, not, I'm not putting down anything psychic, but when you people give their power away to psychics because they're reading the current energy, but guess what? We create our own reality. We can change anything a psychic says. So I saw that intuitive and I was, that, that was really helpful. And the way you looked made me feel comfortable, you know, like, I mean, it's look, it matters how we look. It just does. Sorry. That's how society is. But, um, <laughs> and I felt good. I went with my feeling. It felt light. So I sit down, I was, go, I, I'm not going to get specific, but I was going through a really rough time in my life and I had a smile on my face. You would have never known that. Uh, what time I was, that I was going through a rough time and I, I just a big smile on my face and you said, I would never normally say this to people, but spirit is telling me that they've been guiding you and that you've gotten all these new, that you already know this. So you told me something that would have been devastating to me had I not already known, but I did already know. And like, you could have never known. And then you even said the angels, angels have been guiding you to wake up at certain times in the night. And that's a, my, you described the past week that I was having, like that current week, I was being guided to wake up in the middle of the night at certain times for a very specific reason we won't get into, but exactly what you said was happening. So I'm like, that's why I leached onto you. <laughs> and I came back every six months because I'm like, there is no way that was so specific. And it was a whole session, like, a, you know, 30 minutes at least where spot on, spot on, spot on, spot on. You were completely connected to my spiritual team. Um, and it was just the most amazing. And I was like, that, yeah, that's why we still talk today is because I know you're legit. I also realize that there are a lot of fake people out there who have bad intentions and who are just uh, manipulating you for money. And they're, but don't let, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We also have khaki bars in this world. 
<laughs> oh, and you're very kind. And, and remember, you know, when you listen and you listen to the teachings that are being given to you, showing up authentically was always impressed upon me. And of course, being a businesswoman and a professional in a different career, all those skills all factored in. So showing up at those venues, um, I, I never know who was going to show up and, but you always were there and I, that was wonderful. <laughs> so it was fun. And, um, you know, it's, it's a journey of, um, again, I will stress to your audience that if we don't listen, we don't receive. And, mm-hmm. you know, if, and there's many ways to listen and, you know, waking up onto this path of, if there's anybody out there that's, you know, thinking, I wonder if I've got this or, you know, any of those nudges of questioning. Yeah. If you're questioning things, it's time to act. And there's so many little tidbits and, you know, that we can offer um, people just awakening people, you know, who really want to, there's thousands of wonderful teachers out there that can expand your abilities that you may already have. And that's the beauty of the world we live in today. You know, it, we can be as open as we want about all of this. And that's why your podcast is so successful. You know, you can talk real authentically because there's so many people out there that can identify with you. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that I feel like the people who come to me consistently, they're identifying something in me that, um, you know, whether I, I, I resonate with them apparently, you know, I mean, I don't know, maybe you can explain that. But the consistent consistency of people showing up on my path with all the selection out there of people they can go to is quite the honor. So it's I know an energy. Some, yeah. So I know that there is, you know, magical things that happen because, you know, I've only been given the most wonderful clients for what, 23 years now. Yeah, you have the authenticity energy. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. Like you're not you're you're living your life, you're walking the walk, not just talking the talk. And people feel that. Well, that was given to me. I mean, it, it, I won't <clears throat> excuse me. I won't say it was a 2 by 4, but it was close. And it was about Kathy. You know, it, it's time to stop being a wannabe, meaning I want to be what she's doing and what she, you know, and all that. And it's like it's time to stop that. Um, you know, you have what you have and you have the Kathy Barr style and there's nothing to be ashamed of that. You know, you have everything you need and it just, it basically becomes trusting yourself and listening and, and then ask, keep asking to be guided to those people who can help you because we're all not like this. You know, I mean, I have family members, I have friends who are not like me, No, but they know you know, they know what I do and, um, and they're intrigued by it, but yet they don't, they don't care. They're not ready to do it themselves. And that's great. You know, it, so there's a mixed bag here of being intuitive and intuitive healer. Um, even though we're always on and we're always, you know, I think you understand that, that, you know, things are coming in, the input is there. We can still just be normal and normal, you know, with friends that aren't on this journey. You know, we don't have to be either or we can be at all. Yeah, I don't um, talk to certain people about certain things. And even with my clients, I have some clients who aren't really. And I always wonder why they hired me because I'm like, because I'm I don't hide that. Like my websites, you know, law of attraction, energy, like like how did you miss it? But, you know, I, I, I you can use other words like another word for law of attraction is like momentum. And I think we can all agree that everything's energy, you know, so there's really nothing wrong with talking about energy. It's, it's, it's quantum physics, it's science, it's, it's proven like these days we can actually prove all of this stuff. Well, and with, they've got the technology now to prove all the stuff exactly. that we've been only talking about in theory for decades. Right. Right. And energy follows thought and our thoughts are creating our reality. I mean, this is universal truth. Yes. You know, it's not something that people like you and I are making up. Um, think about it. What are you thinking today and what's showing up, uh, you know, tomorrow or, you know, the next week. So when you learn these, you know, tools, it's, it opens you up to have the most phenomenal life. And um, I I wish it for everybody, you know, like you said, take action. Like it's one thing to be, like you said, you were kind of a one of, I want to do this. I want to do this. Eventually you guys, you got to take the leap. You got to take the action. I had to do it everybody living their life that they a a dream life like they love 
we were at first discontent because we knew we weren't on our path and we went through a dark night of the soul. I don't know anyone who's, who has their own business, who didn't go through it first. We went through it, you know, and then, you know, you get that all figured out. You start taking at first baby steps and and the universe loves action. The universe loves action. Once you start trusting that, once you start trusting like your intuition that, Mm -hmm. and you take little steps, things start opening up and falling into place and unfolding beautifully. But if, if not, if you're just sitting in your room, you know, we're sitting on a meditation cushion, you know, you've got to take action. Mm-hmm. Well, wishing and praying is great, great. but action, you, the only way we're going to get it off the ground is through action. And because, <clears throat> you know, the universe rewards um, activity. I mean, it rewards um, obedience. You know, it's, it's like, okay, I have these great ideas. I'm just going to sit here and let them percolate. Well, <laughs> Then they're going to percolate for a long time until you implement and somebody them else gets them. Somebody because exactly. it goes out there into the field. Somebody else is going to grab them. And that's happened to me so many times where I did not act. And then like within six months or a year, there's somebody else doing my idea, like almost exactly the same because it was out there in the ethers. I didn't take action. So somebody mm-hmm. else who was in that higher frequency and actually bothered doing it, mm-hmm. they grabbed it. So Kathy, let me ask you a question. Yes. If you could go back and tell young Kathy, give, 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 young Kathy advice, what would it be? Like, what would you, what do you, what do you wish you could have known as a child that you now know? Oh my, I I would tell that little, little girl to totally, totally to believe in herself, to trust herself. Um, I mean, this guy shoot for this, you know, the sky's the limit. I mean, I would, I would ask her to dream big and think big. And then, you know, what's the best that can happen if you do that? Um, basically believe just to believe in herself more, you know, and know that she's just as special as the next person. I love um, that. Worthiness is huge. For, uh, the the biggest mm-hmm. block for everybody, like almost mm-hmm. everyone. Um, I have clients who are so professional and so amazing and their lives look amazing. And they still have limiting beliefs that are directly related to worthiness. Well, and another one of those is what people will think. And I can tell you with living in the community that I live in, and trying to switch careers and be something that nobody would have ever embraced um, at that time period that much without questioning. Um, I I will say to you that um, what people think is a big driver and Mm -hmm. it's, it's so negative and it's not, yes, there's a certain element of what people think, but not to rule your life. And that's, you know, I was in that vibration of, I can't do that because, oh, you know, don't want to rock the boat. I don't, people will blah, blah, blah. And that was the, Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and then you just get to a point where God just, I mean, it, the rug just comes out and it's like, you know, you just do it. And it's like, why did I put so much energy into that? You know, it doesn't. Yeah. It's so liberating. Like I feel so good. And honestly, I was still struggling with that even last year. Like what I said, I just came out of the spiritual closet. Like I've been spiritual my entire life. Like what I, I remember even being five years old and and like being in church going, "Mm, this isn't like, (laughs) I kind of, I was a critical thinker, you know, and I had, had, um, I could feel people's feelings. It was similar to your story where we just, think because we're kids we don't know until we're older not everybody's like that not every because i would start to tell people and they're like what are you talking about like i i did before i watched the secret in 2006 i always knew about the law of attraction i i just didn't know it, what it was called and when i was i was like this is what i've been trying to say like when i think this and feel this this happens when i think this and feel like i saw it i saw the energy i, I knew like some days i'm repelling people some days i'm <laughs> attracting people works both mm-hmm. ways it's not only for the good guys mm-hmm. law of attraction works all up and down the frequency mm-hmm. the vibrational scale but um so what message do you wish you could help the world understand about people who work as a spiritual healer that's my last question to you so to wrap things up okay so myself as a spiritual healer and that spiritual healers i know and i will tell the world this we're just all here to help people. We're here to love people. We're here to accept people unconditionally. We we show up as healers with whatever the gifts we have. And um, that's what we're about. We're here to help you. We're here to 
do whatever needs, you know, whatever the needs are, we're here to help you unpack that and, you know, give you the guidance. Um, that's the version of myself. I, I'm, and, but I, I look at what other people, spiritual healers that I know do. And I can tell you our commonality is we just want to help people with the gifts that we've been given. And it's just pure and simple as that. I love that. And, and I agree. And I know that is definitely true about you. So Kathy, where can people find you? Well, I have a website um, and it's um, theheartsjourney.net and you can contact me through my website. Uh, you can read all about me. There's so much there. Um, there's a lot there and you can learn more about me that way. I, I live in Greenfield, Indiana. I uh, work out of my home. You can contact me by phone, text, email, um, or show up at my door. And Kathy, you are just as wonderful over the phone as in person. I've done phone sessions with you and it's not like, it's not like doing these sessions remotely, you, you get anything less out of it. So you guys, if you are at a distance, um, it's okay that you're not in Indiana, Greenfield, Indiana, you said, it's okay that you don't live near her and you can't see her in person. She's great over the phone. She could, do you do Zoom Aww. sessions? I don't do Zoom. I'll do FaceTime um, or it's basically phone calls, um, okay. but, I, but I can do whatever anybody wishes um, to do. It's, 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 it's just as easy. So, okay. Perfect. All right, Kathy. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. And you guys, um, if you liked this podcast, if you love talking about everything spiritual, this is the podcast for you, please subscribe. I'm really trying to grow this. This is brand new. Kathy's only my second guest, but I'm going to have a guest every single week. That. Yeah. Yeah. When you said my podcast was successful, I'm like, well, she's just reading the future. <laughs> <laughs> so please subscribe well, please help my channel grow oh. hit like hit like if you liked this and um also comment below let us know what you thought about this episode if you have any stories about your own intuition we would love to hear those stories in the comments below share with anybody who needs to hear this and thank you so much for watching this episode